This was the last ever video of actress Shannon Doherty, star of Beverly Hills 90210 and Charmed before her untimely death today at age 53. Now in this last video of her on her podcast, she literally told the world she has little time left if her cancer treatment fails this one last time. Again, may her soul rest in peace. I have no idea how long I'm gonna be on the chemo for. I have no idea if it's gonna be you know, three months or if it's going to be six months or if we're going to, you know, if after three months it's not working, if we're going to change again. Like, I don't really, that's not something that I can predict. It's not something my doctors can predict. And it's, it's scary. It's like a big wake up call. At the same time, I got to say that there is some positivity there. And the positivity is that because my molecular structure of my cancer cells changed recently, it means that there's a lot more protocols for me to try. So, you know, for the first time in a couple of months, probably I feel hopeful because there are so many more protocols now. Whereas before I was hopeful, but I was still getting prepared. So I was packing up and I started crying because I, again, I felt like I was giving up on a dream. And what did that mean for me? Did it mean that I was um, giving up on life? Did it mean that I was like throwing in the towel? I'm talking this out with you guys because I have so many thoughts and so many emotions about it. And I have found this podcast to be really cathartic. So I guess I'm using it as a therapy session. So thank you for digging in with me and listening. The shaving of, of the head was extremely was um, a pivotal moment. That was pivotal and traumatic. Yeah. And I think it took you a few days to even realize what had happened. Yeah. I think, you know, we, <laughs> I mean, we have the videos. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, as I was doing it, I'm like, why am I doing this? And why does she put me? <laughs> and in, in my head, I'm like trying to be the perfectionist. I'm like, I should have watched the video. First of all, why didn't I cut some of the hair first? Like this machine is not going through. And I'm like, yeah, this is going great, Rosa, right? She's doing amazing. Look how beautiful her head looks. I'm like, Fuck. Breaking up with you, we weren't married. That was, that was painful for three fucking years. We, we, had, we were together four plus years. And then I think did three years on and off. Yeah. Like we wouldn't even see us speak to each other for six months, running to each other, be like, oh, you want to live together again? Okay. Like that's a crazy shit we would do. But you know, it's hard to move on from really, really deep, meaningful relationships, you know? Um, and I think, you know. certain people though that you, that you stay attracted to like your entire life because right. it goes Connected beyond. Connected to, for sure, right? right? It goes yeah. beyond the physical. It's, yeah. It's, you know, when, yeah. when two people's brains sort of snap together in that yeah. sense where they really recognize one another and their conversations are always interesting and they can challenge each other a little bit. Right. I think that that's, I don't think it's that easy to find. Right. So there's always that connection. To grow up loving someone to that degree and then have them be so sick impacted me in a lot of ways that I didn't realize until I was a lot older. I think watching him go in and out of the hospital and the fear that I constantly felt of is, is this gonna be the last time I see him? Is he gonna die? Is he not gonna come out of the hospital? It definitely brought up feelings of abandonment, but it wasn't like that he, w he was doing that to me. It was more that I was, I was putting, I was projecting that onto myself because I was so scared that the most important man in my life was not going to be there, that I, there was... Well, I was watching you at home on, on my TV and I was like, yo, that's like my dream girl, you know what I mean? And then met you and I was like, crushy crush. And then, you know, then hell yeah, man, I was like in, you know? And you were fun, man. You, I mean, you were spicy as but you know you were fun we had like i like i loved hanging out with you 
you know back then you were a cigarette smoker i'd always be like oh man this girl smokes cigarettes like a fighter pilot you'd have in between teeth like what's up man? <laughs> That's true. yeah you were very gangster -y, you I know oh yeah a little gangster. swagger gangster but sexy great great style great aesthetic even your home is beautiful you know like amazing cook you know you would like yeah. you know you're, you're solid you know thank you one minute we were friends and then one minute we weren't yeah and you know i think from my perspective as i was looking in now being an outsider i saw that you were swayed by two certain individuals and particularly one you and know was, i'm a swear huh you know i'm a swear yeah yes my downfall yeah yeah you you were always easily swayed yeah and it was very frustrating for me because i always used to tell you like yeah. tour have an opinion like you're smart you're funny you're talented i i loved you and i respected you and i wanted you to believe in yourself as much as i believed in you um when you treat patients for years does it take a toll on you when you lose them I, the second part is or are you able to stay detached and i know that that's a no from you right so i have an obligation to you know, bring the best knowledge, the best individualized thinking, the best strategic thinking, and all the best resources anywhere in the world to a patient's journey of healthcare or cancer treatment. But at the end of the day, their outcome is encoded in the universe. And so my job above all else is to make sure that they have a journey that's closest to the journey they want to have. And that includes the dying process. Um, you know, you enter alone and you leave alone. You can't really help someone enter well, you can just try to catch them. <laughs> right. But you can help someone fly away well. Dave Chappelle is my favorite comedian. I absolutely, absolutely love him. I think his comedy is thought provoking and I realized that some of you may be upset hearing Dave Chappelle because he has ruffled a lot of feathers and not apologized for certain things. And what I learned from that is not necessarily that I agreed with it or didn't agree with it, but that he stood by his beliefs or he stood by what his comedy act was about. And comedy is a way to explore different thoughts and to turn hot topics into, I think, bigger and deeper conversations, to be honest. Like for me, that's what it does. Somebody recently said on my podcast, they said, you know, Shannon, your, your picker is broken. And it really hit home because I've known it for a long time. I, I, I got a few boyfriends here and there that I was very lucky with. It had nothing to do with my picker. It's just, they ended up being amazing guys. I pick the wrong men for me. I pick men with red flags like all over the place. I see a red flag and I charge towards it. I don't run away from it when I should be running away. So when I saw the buyer beware category on your thing, I was like, oh, that's all the men in my life came from that category. I grew up in a small town, about 12,000 in Alabama. And oh, by the way, if I could have been on 90210 instead of stuck in that town, oh, I would have chased some, definitely chased some buyer <laughs> bewares. You know what I mean? So I've just given you perspective that you know what? I get it.